history on it and everything. Look at this, Robert. We need to clean the gas tank out. Could you stick your hand in there and yeah, clean I'll, it? I'll stick my hand in there. Is it a brass fuel tank? It's looking no, like a big beer keg. It's aluminum. Oh, okay. Is it aluminum? Is that right? Uh huh. What a nice thing. That's, That's amazing. That's a gas cap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we're here at day two at the Florida Flywheelers. It is now Thursday. It's raining with the leftover. Everything from the hurricane is still here in Drury. But we're inside here, Mr. Bruce Neal, and he has got a 1923 Mac model AV. And the only reason I know that is because it's right here. <laughs> really simple. And this thing has got a four cylinder inline gas engine with some hard wheels. There is no give here. Imagine the rough riding this truck is. Cast iron with hard rubber, no give. It is least run though. So we're going to attempt to start this thing up and see what all he's got here in this cool shop here. So when's the last time you started this thing up? You said about three years Two ago. Two years ago. Okay. Look at that engine. I'm shed some light on this thing here. Okay. Look at that. It looks like a two cylinder, but those are two big jugs with pistons in each. Two pistons in each. Yeah, and there's no head. You got to pull the jugs to get the pistons. Yep. Crazy. So he's putting some fresh gas in it. Very cool. Drain and renew oil every 500 miles. 500 miles may not seem like a lot, but 500 miles on these right here, that is a lot <laughs> of miles. Now the covers on the side of the crankcase, would you open those up to like service the engine? Or what were those yeah, for? Just they call up inspection plates. Crazy. This thing is in beautiful shape. Okay, this is your spark. This is your spark lever. So timing advance, basically. Uh huh. And this is your throttle. Okay. So the S switch is on. So is there a throttle right there? Yeah. So you could use either one. Okay. So it's got a cruise control. Cruise right control. Here. There you go. Yep. Look at all this brass. Yeah, and then there's a. There's an impulse on the mag. Yep. On the back side. I don't know why I thought we were going to get in there and hit a starter button. This thing's hand crank, isn't it? It is. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's the crank right there. Now, did you put it back in neutral? Yes, I did. Okay. This thing was used on the street of uh, London, Kentucky, I believe, till 1954 and 55. What was it used for? <clears throat> water the streets. It had a water wagon on it. Water tank. It's amazing it made it this far with it carrying water and no rust issue, you know, major rust issues, I guess. Yep. Now, my give us, yeah, give us the backstory. You said you Yeah, my dad bought it in 1967 uh, from a friend of his that bought it from London, Kentucky Street, mm -hmm. city. And they, uh, they brought it, brought it home. Well, in fact, you can see it. They towed it with a wrecker. See that, that patch on that tire? Okay, yep. Yeah. They pulled it a little too fast, and it made this blow. Uh, it blew apart. Well, it kind of blew a hole in it. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, when I was 10 years old, when my dad restored it in 1968, and I helped him, what I could do. So this thing's been restored for half as old as it is. Exactly. It's, it's it, it hadn't been touched since 68. Now, one thing you guys should notice is this thing's chain driven, which a lot of people will never see anything like that. So I've never. To an axle that's up inside the frame, that chain is another gear reduction back there to the back. You know what they did that for, depending on the what you're going to use your truck for. If you need the lower years, they just change the sprockets. <clears throat> Add a link in there or something. Yeah, yep. that's easy enough. Instead of, that's, that was their, that was the thing, instead of changing the gears, the rear end gears. Just change the sprockets. All right. Hand crank. Okay. Hand crank. See how he's got his thumb where it's not wrapped around that hand crank? 
You put it just like that so you don't break that thumb joint. It's not clicking now. Something's not right. Impulse is not clicking. Look at the belt. See that belt right there? How it's belt we put together. See, you're really the old timers who see this video. You're really supposed to be pulling up on it. Oh, really? Not pushing down? Right. It's still not clicking. Yeah, I don't hear it. I know you're saying, yeah. So what he's talking about is the impulse mag has got a kind of a spring in there so it clicks over real fast and helps make spark happen. Oh, there we go. Hey. Hey. Imagine having to do this in like Kentucky when it's like zero degrees outside. Yeah, you have to go out there and hand crank your truck to go do your job in the morning. Oh, we take a lot of things for granted nowadays. It's still not clicking out. And maybe it'll free up once it yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. Definitely. Oh, there's a the carburetor way down there. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Way down there. Yeah, see you it see, down there? You see it best from right there. Yeah. Underneath the fender well. Oh, yeah, right through there. Mm. All right. I don't know why Still don't have no clicking on the impulse mag. Which is what helps it click over and run like it needs to. The bevels and the headlights are brass. Kick back on you. His impulse is not working. When it does it, that little dog holds the holds the armature back, mm -hmm. Just and then it, it then flick it fast. flicks it loose and it does flick it faster. Yeah. Where right now all I'm doing is it's just going to slow motion. And I'll bet it spark, yeah. I hear it starting to just barely kick, just tiny, tiny bit. Would you mind turning it over? No. I, it doesn't have the ignition on. I want to watch to see what's going on. Something to keep in mind is like, could you only imagine having to restore this thing today? Is there's like no calling anywhere and saying, hey, I need some piston rings for a 1922 Mack truck. <laughs> Because they just don't exist anymore. It's something that have to be made or built in a machine shop, something along those lines. See so if you can get in there and see kind of see what you Okay. Doing.
That's all right. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong, but I'm going to have to pull the mag off. Here, okay, it's, right in, it's engaged in there. Right there. I'll take it over from there. Because it's engaged. <laughs> Yeah, it's past it now. There it goes. It's starting to grab it now. There's no way. Now it's grabbing it. Yep, here it is. Yep. <laughs> That's insane. Remember when we went out and started that airplane? Yeah. Ham profit? So. Yeah, it's not grabbing it now. I think if you roll it right up there to it, it should. I think I'm going to float it. Also possible, I guess. But this thing, when it's running right, just. Two turns and it's going. Fall on and it starts. <laughs> yeah, it's right there about to come up on the on the uh, catch there. That's barely. Yeah, it's an eighth of a turn right there. What's that? Is it, see, once it once it gets to an RPM, yeah, it's, it's, it's supposed it's, to yeah. swing that dog back, mm -hmm. and then it goes from retarding the spark so to advancing. advancing it. Go! We're gonna have to wash this thing off. We can drive it in the parade. Driving the parade and get washed off. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs>
on the back side where you would adjust the wick inside to keep them burning. Yeah, yeah. Now if we shut it off, we'll start right back up. He's warmed up. It should just. Now he'll advance the timing a little bit. It's going to run a lot smoother. The exhaust change? Yeah, go ahead. for lubrication. That's nice. If you look like everywhere, there wasn't grease fittings really back then. I mean, they were, they were oilers. So you put oil or grease in some of these caps like this. And that's what kept all these joints lubed up. Yeah, that's a, I think they call that a Zerk fitting. Mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of the grease fittings you know today. Here, I show them up underneath here and they can see everything. The transmission up there. Oh, wow. And right here's the actual rear axle that what dries everything. And then the one back there is just going to be like a floating rear axle, basically. All wood flatbed. Sweet. What do you history. think about all this? This is. Nuts. Like, nuts. Just imagine, like, the trailers that would have been pulled behind an old semi-truck like this is, like, all steel wheels with hard rubber also. It's crazy. A lot of the cabs are made out of wood, too. Yeah, awesome. So is it all original or? I had that bag rebuilt about five years ago. Well, you let it sit for three years. Paid five, <laughs> 400 to have it rebuilt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the impulse. But it didn't, now I think about it, that it, it was not working right after I put it on. And it's great. Radiator got a little, not too hot, just warmed up just a tiny bit. Crazy. So cool. Well, let's check out all the other cool stuff in here. There's lots of stuff. Yeah. Look at this 1919 Buick. That is insane. I don't know if this one runs or not. This one's so old. The wheels are made out of wood. That's nuts. That rubber filled tire, or air filled tires, I mean, but the difference between, you know, why those tires are so hard on that truck is because of the wood the back there. I don't, I don't know for sure, but you would imagine that it's like they didn't have a hard a rubber tire that was strong enough to hold air and still carry all the weights. So that's why those trucks had solid wheels, steel or cast iron wheels, and solid rubber. There's all kinds of cool old stuff in here. Just everything hanging on the wall. Mr. Neil, his name's Bruce also. Crazy, I don't see too many Bruce's around. 
and his father built this place back in 2004, he is telling me, he passed away in 2011, and this is like the meeting point because they both lived at opposite ends of the state of Florida, and they come here and spend three weeks out of the year together doing cool stuff, and really touches home to me and my pops, so pretty cool. But all these engines, I look like you want to buy one of these, because they're both for sale. That's yeah, pretty cool. I don't know what we can run off of this. It's an economy engine, but let's see, like something this big is only eight horsepower. What? <laughs> Dang. Eight horsepower at 400 RPMs. That is crazy. And then like this guy right here, he's got a data plate on it anywhere. I think it's another economy engine. I don't know, but. That's nuts. Pretty cool, huh? Like how, how big these things were to make such a small amount of horsepower. But when you think about it, like at the end of the day, the amount of manpower that it relieved for doing certain jobs, you can have this engine running. And these things were old, 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 early, early 1900s. Oh, okay, yes. Crazy. Oh, McCormick started up on gas and run on diesel. What? Can you believe that? That's insane. <laughs> Look at this big boy. Oh, wow. It's all history, man. If it's not, it may be locked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. move a little bit. There you go. Oh, wow. Like we're on an episode of American Pickers. For sure. So we're the Pickers. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is so cool. See, I was telling you, I bought four more. Oh, we're just putting some stuff in our pockets. Huh? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that gas tank. Gas tank? What is it? It's a gas pump. Gas pump. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool. Look at this one. Oh, whoa. Glass. Yeah, that's tall. Times were so much simpler back then, you know? It's like civilization. There weren't as many people as there are today. And whenever, like, a big machine was made, it helped out our country grow into what it is today crazy coming here to the Florida Flywheelers and seeing like all the history and you know if younger guys like us don't continue to be involved in this kind of stuff and recognize it the history is just going to be gone it's just going to be a thing of the past and that's why it's really important for someone younger like myself or really anyone the next generation behind the baby boomers you know to continue on the history and be in, involved in stuff like this and it's really cool we were just talking about these in, on my video house only eight horsepower yeah i got a 10 at home so this is we're gonna start it up <laughs> so here's what would be a that's the carburetor yeah that's a joke <laughs> Magneto. These things are so cool. I see you're like, yeah, I've never seen this before. You never seen one of these before? No. They're everywhere here, but it's been raining, so no one's had theirs running. What they're gonna do is go ahead and pre-oil everything. This oils the cylinder, so the piston isn't sitting there going back and forth dry. Add a little bit of oil to it. Yeah, to turn the grease cups down just a little. That'd be the camshaft, I'm assuming. Yep. That's the governor. Yep. That fly weights, those weights spin out. And it starts to get out the RPMs and it slows it down. There's a, the clicking on the impulse. Yeah. Yep. You would put your finger right over this hole. All right. Yep. What 
be able to draw on fuel. Okay, that's good. That's how it is. It only fires when it needs more power. So now that it's sitting here rotating, it's not going to fire again until it's just like that. See? Governor back there, you can't really see it now, but it, whenever it starts to slow down, it'll fire again. Dang. But when you put a load on it, like it's running a belt or something like that, it'll be pop, 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 pop. another semi truck this thing is a 1902 oshkosh all-wheel drive vehicle all-terrain it's got a 12 valve cummins in it it is an absolute workhorse it's got that all new carbon fiber composite balsa wood roof what it's a unit dude all high aircraft grade aluminum body wow it's got them their rubber tires on it that's the only thing that's old it's got these old rubber tires on it Ten hundred twenty twos. How many lug? Eighty seven lug front and oh. rears. It's got them Bluetooth drive shafts that you can actually see. Very cool rig. Osh Kizosh is what make it is. I believe it was a twelve valve Cummins powered inside here. Uh oh. Oh. Wow. Big boy. Like Man, a locomotive in here. Oh yeah. See, look. This thing came straight from the shores of Okinawa. <laughs> look at that rocket thruster underneath there. Jeez. It's got one of them high lift beds. It's a dump boy. Big old dump boy. <laughs> All jokes aside, this thing is cool. It's another old style semi truck here, all wheel drive. It's got a six cylinder gas engine in it. Not chain drive. It's got a regular rear axle in it, but it's very cool. All wood frame windows. Pretty neat. Got a hood stack. Pretty nifty. So that's a wrap for day two. We've had a lot of fun over there with Mr. Bruce. It's so crazy finding Sam someone <laughs> else's name, Bruce. And his cool Mack truck he had over there. We'll be back out here for tomorrow, Friday, day three at the Florida Flower. There's supposed to be sunshine and a beautiful day tomorrow. We just had a lot of rain here at the hurricane tropical storm whatever she ended up being but it wasn't too bad hope you guys are enjoying our little series we got going on here at the florida fly so catch you tomorrow peace